Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the hypersensitivity and autoimmunity. So first starting with some terminology that we will be getting inside the this topic. So first one is the defect or malfunction in either innate or acquired immune response provokes the illness or disease. It means if there is any defect or any malfunction in the innate that is by birth or acquired means what we are getting from outside in the immune system okay it can cause disease okay and when there is an overactive immune response we will call it is hypersensitivity when there is an inappropriate reaction to self it is called as autoimmunity and when there is an ineffective immune response is called as immunodeficiency so this three term is different hypersensitivity means overactive autoimmunity means inappropriate reaction and immunodeficiency means ineffective immune response next we have the causes of hypersensitivity and it's um, like what are the cause can uh, this happen this hypersensitivity the hypersensitivity is the term used when an immune response result in exaggerated or inappropriate reaction harmful to the host when the immune response is showing some inappropriate reaction it can cause hypersensitivity there are some other causes like autoimmunity reaction against microbes and reaction against environmental antigen the first one is autoimmunity normally we tolerate our own antigen that is self tolerance self tolerance if fails it's called auto immunity what happen in our body also there are some antigen okay which is needed for our body that we can tolerate okay but if it comes from outside only we will think there are foreign bodies and our body will show reaction but in some cases the our self tolerance means our own immunity only it is killed by our antibody okay that self tolerance is fail that is auto immunity second one is reaction against microbes excessive reaction or persistent antigen the form antibodies may bind to the microbial antigen to produce immune complex that triggers inflammation in the tissue example is like glomerulonephritis or post streptococcal disease the next cause is reaction against the environmental antigen the pollens animal dunders dust Okay, twenty percent of the population. The allergy. Actually, normal terms, if you say about the hypersensitivity, means it's an allergic reaction. Everyone is having in different different ways. Someone is having dust allergy. Someone is having smoke allergy. Someone is having some food allergy. Okay, so it's depend on the people. So that type of is called as reaction against the environmental antigen. Next, we have types of hypersensitivity disease. So there are four category. Okay, in short form, we can call it is ACD. A for anaphylaxis, C for cytotoxic, I for immune complex, and B for delayed. Okay, anaphylaxis, cytotoxic, immune response, and delayed types of hypersensitivity. So, if you uh, discuss in details, the first one is type one, which is called as immediate hypersensitivity. Okay. what do you mean by immediate hypersensitivity the onset within minutes of antigen challenge means the onset of reaction will start within a minutes and example are allergic to molds and insect bites the second type is cytotoxic hypersensitivity in this onset within minutes or few hours of antigen challenge the example are adult hemolytic anemia and drug allergy third type is immune complex mediated hypersensitivity the onset usually start within 2 to 6 hours and the example includes serum sickness and systemic low pus erythematosus okay serum sickness and systemic is all are disease condition okay the type four is delayed hypersensitivity it inflammation by 2 to 6 hours peaks by 24 to 48 hours example include poison or chronic asthma here i have told you about the four types of hypersensitivity and their name see this all types is based on the onset and the example i have given okay onset means when the body will show the reaction against that antigen the first one will take few minutes the second one will take minute to hours 
the third one will take 2 to 6 hours and fourth one will take 24 to 48 hours that's why the name also delayed hypertension sensitivity the first types of hypersensitivity that is immediate or type 1 the rapid immune reaction within minutes an interaction of antigen and immunoglobulin e antibody that is bound to the mast cell in a sensitized host and it is induced by environmental antigen that stimulate the strong okay strong response and production in genetically susceptible individuals a reaction start by the entrance of an antigen to this okay when there is a allergies to this individual so there are some signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis means the allergic reaction to our body like in every system of our body we can notice some sign or symptoms just few example i'll give you just like a running nose okay swelling of the conjunctiva headache okay like a cough diarrhea and vomiting okay loss of bladder control pelvic pain skin itching or heart rate will be fast or slow okay so it is not necessary that if the person is having allergic reaction they will show all the symptoms together but it may depend on the individual okay among these they may show any signs and symptoms if they are having hypersensitivity to anything the next one is the sequence of events in immediate hypersensitivity so there are two sequence one is immediate one is late phase in the immediate the vasodilation and vascular leakage smooth muscle spasm that is 5 to 30 minutes after the exposure and subsiding by 60 minutes the late phase reaction 2 to 8 hours and may last several days and it cause inflammation and tissue destruction the next type is second type that is antibody mediated disease it is caused by the antibodies directed against target antigen on the surface of cell or other tissue. The components the antigen may be normal and molecules instinct to cell membrane or in the extracellular matrix or they may have observed the exogenous antigen that is drug metabolite. Okay, in the mechanism of mediate diseases or type 2 is when circulating the cells such as erythrocyte or platelet or coated with the auto antibodies with or without complement protein the cell become target for the phagocytosis by neutrophils and macrophages and its opposed cells are usually eliminated in the spleen and this is why splenectomy is of clinical benefits in autoimmune thrombocytopenia and some form of autoimmune hemolytic anemia Next type is type 3 that is immune complex disease. So antigen antibody complex that are formed in the circulation may deposit in blood vessels and leading to complement activation and acute inflammation. So it may be exogenous or may be endogenous. Exogenous means from outside, endogenous means from inside. So they are mere formation of immune complex does not equate with the hypersensitive disease. Small amount of antigen antibody complexes may be produced during the normal immune response and are usually phagocyte and destroyed. And it is only when these complex are produced in a large amount persist and the deposit in tissue that are pathogenic. Okay, so this is the third type of hypersensitivity. The last one is type 4. Okay. So, it's a several autoimmune disorder as well as pathogenic reaction to environmental chemicals are pres uh, persistent microbes are known to be caused by T cell. The occurrence and significance of T lymphocyte mediated tissue injury have been increasingly appreciated as the method of detecting and purifying T cells from the patient circulation and the lesson have improved. Okay, this is the fourth type of hypersensitivity. Next, we are going to study about the immunological tolerance. Definition, the specific unresponsiveness to an antigen that is induced by exposure of lymphocytes to that antigen. Okay, a lack of immune responsiveness to one own tissue antigen means when our body is having lack of or failure of adjustment with our own body antigen that is 
called as autoimmunity but when they can tolerate it is called as immunological tolerance means they can tolerate all individual are tolerant to of their own intrusion so everyone have their tolerance to their own intrusion if they fails so it become autoimmune disorder so there are two types of tolerance one is central one is peripheral in the central tolerance there is a immature self reactive lymphocyte in the peripheral tolerance there is a mature self reactive t cell response okay so this is the two types of tolerance central and peripheral our next topic is auto immunity already we have discussed about the definition that is immune response against self antigen by implication pathologic means when our immune response will be doing or showing the reaction against our own antigen okay that can cause disease is called as auto immunity so there are general principles like pathogenesis the development of auto immune reflex a combination of susceptibility gene and the environmental triggers okay usually infectious and different autoimmune disease may be systemic or organ specific and may be caused by different type of immune response that is antibody or t cell mediated now i'll tell you the mechanism of autoimmunity okay what happen like how it is working on what, what happen when autoimmunity occur so there are two causes one is genetic causes one is one environmental causes genetic means like hereditary from our genes we are getting and environmental means from our our surrounding things if anything is exposed us to our body okay this is the two parts genetic and environmental so first one is genetic what happened there is a susceptibility to genes means if someone is already susceptible to getting autoimmune disorder because then their family someone like grandfather or grand grandfather was having so in their gene also there is a chance that they can get it so what happened failure of self tolerance so their uh, immune response will have that failure of self tolerance it can cause self reactive lymphocytes okay in the another side because of environmental stimuli like because of any infection or because of any tissue injury or because of any inflammation in the cell it can cause activation of tissue apcs okay it means like antigen presenting cell okay apcs means antigen presenting cell it can cause influx of self reacting lymphocyte into the tissue means entry of large number of things into the tissue which can cause activation of self reacting lymphocyte okay both are same and it can cause tissue injury or autoimmune disorder so this is how the mechanism has occurs for the autoimmune disorder the next one is some example of autoimmune disorder that that is systemic lupus erythematous rheumatoid arthritis or sjogren syndrome so first one is systemic lupus erythematous the fundamental defect in systemic lupus erythematous is a failure to maintain self tolerance it leading to the production of large number of auto antibodies that can damage tissue either directly or in the form of immune complex deposit okay disease manifested include like what are the signs and symptoms we can notice the patient with systemic lupus erythematous nephritis skin lesion arthritis okay and hematologic and neurological abnormalities any organ in the body principally the skin kidney and serosal membrane joint and heart so this is all example of one autoimmune disorder that is systemic lupus erythematous the next one is rheumatoid arthritis so this is also one autoimmune disorder where is a systemic chronic inflammatory disease affecting many tissue but principally the joint so it is also a disorder which in cause chronic inflammation means swelling and it can affect many tissue but mainly it will affect in the joint okay it produce a non supportive proliferative synovitis that frequently progresses to destroy articular cartilage and underlying bone with the resulting disabling arthritis if you see this picture so this is the healthy joint and this is the rheumatoid joints you can notice here the difference 
seen this what happened it is healthy but in this case our own immune system is just showing the cartilage so which can cause inflammation and pain in the joints the next one is sjogren syndrome the sjogren syndrome is a clinical pathologic entry characterized by dry eyes okay or dry mouth so what happen we know that normally from the if you cry the tears will come if you uh, spit out the saliva will come from mouth so in this disease the eyes also will become dry and the mouth also will become dry why because our own immune system will destroy the lacrimal gland and salivary gland lacrimal gland from where the tears are coming and salivary gland from where the saliva is coming so both will be destroyed which can cause dryness in the eyes and mouth okay and it's also known as the sika syndrome or more often in associated with another autoimmune disorder okay primarily like it is not only this disease will come with another disease you can see this problem among the associated disorder rheumatoid arthritis is the most common that is 60% but some patient have systemic lupus erythematosus polymyositis systemic sclerosis vasculitis or thyroiditis approximately 90% of the sjogren syndrome case occurs in women between the age of 35 to 45 years so with this we have finished autoimmunity and hypersensitivity thank you everyone